Live here at the Gold Coast Big Day Out 2002, the Channel V Music Bus bringing you the live action as it unfolds. And joining us right now, bass player of System of a Down, a four-piece from Los Angeles whose latest album, Toxicity, has spawned some incredibly heavy slabs of music upon the world. It's an album that critiques everything from the American government's war on drugs to suicide to the evils of television. Joining us right now from the band Shavo, the man on bass. How are you feeling today? Very well, thank you very much. How are you feeling? I'm feeling quite good. I'm feeling uh, relaxed that things haven't seemed to unfold like they did in Los Angeles in September last year. Channel V were in fact on hand for a... Uh, not myself personally, we had a camera crew there as uh, the crowd erupted when in fact your free outdoor gig was was cancelled and I'm thinking you guys seem to have a bit of a distrust of authority yeah, potentially fuck, there was fuck every every LAPD that there is because they weren't supportive of the band at all well, I'm and thinking I, maybe there was something a bit deeper going on than just the, the size of the crowd maybe they thought system of a down we don't want them speaking their minds on stage because we do speak our minds and we do talk about the truth and uh, sometimes America has a hard time uh, listening to the truth you know I don't know if that was the reason I mean we did expect about 6,000 people and we got about 12. Yep. So it was like double the crowd. So the street was like a fair. It got really huge and we didn't expect that many people. And I think security did get a little bit crumpled, you know, on top of everything. But I have a feeling the, the, the police, because we said, if we can get up there and at least give us the fans our words of why we're not doing this, please let us do that. We said there will be a riot if you don't, because they're there. There's 12,000 of us out there, of us. We call us our fans. You know, we, ain't, we don't call our fans anything but who we are. And uh, they said, there's 12,000 of us. And if I was out there, I'd be ripping shit up right now if my favorite band didn't play. And what happened? They did what I said they would do. Yeah, and they stole a lot of our equipment. And they vandalized the whole lot. And they just messed up everything. But it was the police that didn't let us play. And we could have played and had a wonderful show and everything would have gone smoothly, but they were scared because they're always scared. They're always scared of someone speaking their mind and saying the truth because it might awake, awaken some people's minds. And that, that scares people. It scares authority. Anyone in authority figures get scared of anyone who is not an authority figure speaking their mind about something. You know, especially if it has to do with them. So. Is that, have you witnessed anything like that before in the history of the band? Yes, many times. We've been, uh, we've been stopped. Like we want, okay, we had a show with Slayer in Turkey and we're Armenian and there's a there's a whole feud going on with Armenians and Turkey you know uh -huh. Turkish people about the fact that in 1915 they committed a genocide towards the Armenian people and until today they don't admit to do to, to committing that you know genocide and we just try to bring it out and show that the genocide did happen and uh, they still don't admit to it and it's a feud we're having so anyway Slayer and us we we're on tour in Europe and we we're doing all the countries and we had to go to Turkey so we like to talk about everything, whatever is on our mind. We speak on stage and we were not guaranteed the right to speak our minds. So we boycotted the show and said, fuck Turkey. Not that the people suck, but the government sucks because the government did not guarantee the right to, uh, for us to speak our minds. We wanted to say what we felt and what was the truth and they wouldn't let us. We will not play in a country that will not let us speak our minds. We will not do that. I'm sorry. I'm, I mean, the fans, I love you and I love everything, you know, the support and thank you and keep it up, but it's your country that fucked you guys. And, um... In fact, censored by the Turkish government. Yeah, yeah, so we didn't go. They they did not guarantee our safety because you don't have freedom of speech over there. And if, I, if we, we have a song called Pluck, which stands for politically lying, unholy, cowardly killers, which I made up towards the, the Turkish government, which is they are, you know? They lie, they're unholy, and, 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 and they killed our women, our children, our artists, our representatives of our nation, everyone that was anything to Armenians, they killed so they could erase our race off the ground and they don't admit to it. And they, we've gotten no reparation, no restitution, no nothing. So that's what we demand. I mean, I know, and this happened before the Jewish Holocaust. And if, and Hitler was during, and was a soldier during World War I, which was 1915 around that area where the Armenian genocide occurred. And he witnessed the Armenians getting massacred. And in America, we have a museum for the Holocaust, the, 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 the Jewish Holocaust. And uh, there's a big wall and there's a big quote from Hitler. And it says, who now remembers the Armenians? And that's, he said that before he committed the Holocaust. So if our world keeps closing their eyes to little ones, big ones will occur like the Holocaust. So
So I figure if little ones like Armenians, East Timor is still going on. They're fucking people up in East Timor right now and nobody knows that because the media doesn't tell you. And um, we try to inform you with all that stuff. Enough political stuff, we wrote heavy metal. <laughs> We, was, we were talking before that, you know, when you guys play, when I saw you play in Auckland, there was shenanigans on stage, and it's something that a lot of people might not expect from uh, a band as heavy as yourselves, that you would come out a lot more seriously, you know, with studded armbands and, you know, be a lot more intense. But you, you were intense, but at the same time, you seemed to hell of, have a hell of a good time. Yeah, I mean, our whole vibe of System of a Down is to give the crowd and us a good time. I mean, when we're having a show... It's not only the crowd that's witnessing a show. The band is witnessing a show of not watching a band, but watching the crowd. So we got to have fun, right? And if we're putting on, it's like an energy cycle. It goes from them to us, from us to them, from them to us. And the whole 45 minutes, hour, hour and a half that we play, it's like a cycle where it's like they feed us and we feed them. And it just goes on and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until it's over. And then we all ejaculate and we have an orgasm and we come and we say, oh, that was the greatest, and now I have to go to sleep. So that's what happens. As men like to do after, yes. after coming. Have a sandwich and go to sleep, yes. <laughs> now, uh, Toxicity is, a, is an amazing record. It was recorded with Rick Rubin, who uh, has worked with a whole bunch of amazing bands. And he was also doing it at the same time as working on Macy Gray's latest album. Yeah. Uh, was there any talk of uh, perhaps a collaboration between System of a Down and Macy Gray? Nope. No? Nope. Is there anyone you would like to uh, collaborate with in the future? I like artists. I mean, I'm not that I don't like Macy Gray, but there was no talk. I mean, we collaborate with Arto on our album, and we like artists that aren't famous because we don't want to use anyone famous to make ourselves famous, you know? We like artists, and that's it, period blank. And uh, there's no one in particular, but uh, if anyone does come up, we will use them. And it's people we get along with, and we can jam musically, who get along with us. So it's not a map. Mike Patton. Yeah. There's one. Mike Patton. Well, he's, he's joining the tour a little later uh, on in Adelaide and Perth with his new band Tomahawk, so there We're could be some... there on those two fucking shows. Oh, a referee! Doesn't that suck, dude? I, I wanted to play, but I don't know who made it. There will us. be a time. Now, in, in just a second, in fact, in just split seconds, we're going to take a look at the last track on Toxicity, a song called Aerials, very quickly before we have a look at you performing that live on stage today at the Gold Coast. Can you tell us what it's about? It seems to have a, uh, some traditional music in there. Aerials, actually, um, Darren wrote that song, our guitar player, and um, when he wrote it, he, 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 when he was explaining the song to me, when he was playing it, so I can throw my vibe in there, he, uh, he always visual, because I'm a visual person, and I did like, like the last video, and I'm, yeah. I'm all about video and visual. I visualize music before I see it, before I play it. So he put in my mind, here's I'll put in your mind. When you listen to aerials, think of like a handicapped boy looking up at trapeze artists, up, up, up at his old black and white circus tent inside. And that's what the song is about. Like a handicapped boy looking at a trapeze act and wanting to be up there but knowing that he can't. Hence, aerials in the air. Aerials. Well, let's take a look at the song performed by System of a Down here at the Gold Coast Big Day a few hours ago on the main stage. The crowd erupted, but in a very special, energetic way. This is Aerials from System of a Down here on Channel B's broadcast at the Big Day Out 2002. Shavo, thanks for talking to us. And I look forward to seeing uh, Toxicity, the, your second clip, which you've made. And uh, if we have more time, you could tell us a bit about that clip. But this is Aerial System of a Down. Thanks, Shavo. Have a great tour. Thank you for having me.